Angular 19 is introducing the resource and Rx resource methods, which will change how we work with signals and how we fetch HTTP calls and in turn creating signals out of it. And this is super exciting, even though this is in the experimental stage. So let's have a look at it. But before that, if you don't know who I am, my name is Mohamed Essen. I'm a Google developers expert in Angular for the past seven years. I've created multiple open source libraries used by thousands and thousands of developers. And I'm also an author of two worldwide published books, namely the Angular cookbook, which is packed with a lot of projects containing different topics but more on that later let's get started and let's have a look what kind of application do we have in this video so if you didn't watch my video on linked signals you can find it here and in that one we basically went through the same application here where we have a bunch of users so for example you can switch users from the top and whenever you select a particular user you see the user's posts right here and when you click a particular post then you see the details of that post right here and also the comments related to that particular post so for example if i switch this you are going to see a brief loader here and then the comments of that particular post are loaded as you can see there now the link to the code repository can be found in the description of this video and when you clone the repository i want you to check out to the start branch so do a git checkout start and then after running npm install you can run npm start to serve the application on localhost 4200 great now i just want to show you the hierarchy of the application that we have right now at the top we have the root component or the app component and then we have this app to do list, which is shown right here, which essentially shows the selected users posts right here. And then if you select a particular post, then we also get this app to do details rendered. And in that one, we show the details of the particular post and also load the comments as well. Now, these two components are dumb components because they don't really know where the data comes from or what to do when we click this. Because if you look at the app to do list, you're going to see that it has some inputs and outputs, but it doesn't have any other business logic. Same goes for the to do details. When you click this, you can see all these inputs like the comments array that we show right here. We have a loading comment signal, which essentially shows the loader. We also have an error signal as well. And then we have the selected post, which we show right here. Now let's have a look at the code. If I go to app component TypeScript file, this is the smart component, which has all the logic and all the data. In here, you'll see that the users, the three users we show at the top come from this particular hardcoded array in the users.ts file, which is right here. And then we have other signals. For example, we have for all the posts by a particular user, we have this post signal. And then for all the comments, of a selected post, we have this comments signal. We also have two Boolean signals as well. For example, when we are loading posts by a user or we are loading comments of a particular post. Now, in the last video, we discussed a situation where whenever we change the selected user, and that is whenever I click this and switch to a different user, we need to reset the selected post. For example, if I click here, we have a selected post right here. But if I click here, then it should basically reset it. So it should say, please select a post. In the previous video, we actually did that using the link signal which requires two things one a source which requires a signal not the value of the signal but the actual signal in this case and then we have a computation function here which can return a value so whenever there is a change in the selected user we will reset the value of selected post to null. However, this selected post or this linked signal compared to a computed signal is different because linked signal gives you a writable signal just like this whereas a computed signal is a read-only signal and all these signals that we create are also writable signals as well now in the past we did not have any api or any function regarding signals that can make an asynchronous call and result in a signal and a really simple example here is if i wanted to do something here for example if i wanted to make an api call in this particular function i could do something like return and then you know fetch from a particular url now this is a promise for example in this particular case the selected posts type changes from being a writable signal of post or null to a writable signal of a promise of a response that is a problem the signal does not remain simple value or a primitive value or an array it becomes a promise that's the issue with having any asynchronous function in either linked signal or computed or even effect to some extent because the effect in signals does not really return a signal back an effect can contain a function in that function you can manually set the value of a signal but there's nothing like 
the linked signal, for example, that we can just return a value and then it provides you the signal for it. Well, that changes now. In Angular 19, we are having this resource function that can be used for specifically this case where we want asynchronous operations and get back a result out of it. So what do we do here? The first thing that I'm going to do is to remove this get user post, which essentially shows lot of posts by a particular user and i'm going to remove this effect where we manually do a bunch of things we make the http call right here before the http call we mark the loading indicator for the posts to true and then we also make it false afterwards and then when we retrieve the data from the post we also set the signal right here instead of all of this i'm going to use the resource method so here we can say something like user posts so posts by a user and here we are going to use the resource function from angular core this Similar to link signal requires two things. The link signal requires a source and a computation function. This requires a request just like this, which is supposed to be a function and it's supposed to return a value, not a signal. So unlike link signals, which essentially works with a signal, we want to have a value here. So here we could say something like this dot selected user and then getting the value using this getter. Then we have this loader method right here, which is supposed to work with asynchronous operations. I don't really know why do we have different naming conventions, for example, source here, and then we have a request here, and then we have loader here and computation here. I think personally, it would probably make much sense to name this loader being a request, but I understand that since not all asynchronous operations are request based, it might not be a good naming convention, but this is still in experimental stage. Let me know in the comments what naming conventions would you prefer for this particular API. And since this is in experimental stage, you, me, the community can basically provide our feedback to the Angular team. So this can be modified or changed according to the recommendations. Now, having said that this loader returns a promise like object or here you can see this is promise like unknown so ideally this should return a promise now already i have this post service which essentially uses the http calls as you can see so in this one you can see i have get post we have get post comments but i want to work with simple promises right now so i could either convert these observables into promise or basically create my own promises so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a fetch api call and I'm going to copy the URL from here. So let's copy this. And then here I'm going to paste it. So this is going to be URL slash users slash. And here I'm going to provide the user ID. And then we are going to have posts right here. So let's put it here. Now, whenever we return something from here, it ends up incoming here in an object containing a request property. This request is exactly what is being returned from here. So since we are returning a type user, the request becomes a user. If I change this to something like selected post, then the type here becomes post or null, which is essentially the type of selected post right here. So I'm gonna revert this back and make it selected user. So I can also use an alias right here to call it user instead. And then I can go here and say user.id. And that's pretty much it. There we have our fetch call. Now, as you know, the fetch doesn't return the data directly. So I need to do something like then here and then get the response and then return back response.json just like this. Now that we have this, if I mouse over user post, you're going to see this says resource ref of any. And if you know TypeScript and you are a senior developer, you know, we don't use any, we need to use the TypeScript in the right manner. So how do we type the data that we are returning from here? And along with what is required in resource, we can use a generic here, which takes two things here. The first thing is the data type of the return value. So since we are returning posts here, I can say this is going to be an array of posts just like this. And then I can say the value in the request function that will be returned will be a user. With that said, if I mouse over this now, you can see that this says this is a resource ref of type post. So I know that this is going to be a post array. So let's save this. And now I'm going to go to my HTML and instead of using this posts array or signal, I'm going to actually use this user post. So I'm going to go to the HTML and here you can see that we had posts right here. Now, if I do user post here, you're going to see that this is not a signal. If I mouse over it, this is of type resource ref. So this is not a signal. This has multiple things inside which are signals. For example, we have an error signal. We have a status signal. We have is loading. And then we also have value signal. What we're interested in right now is the value signal. So I can use the value here 
and use the getter to get its value. And if I save this and save the TypeScript file as well, you're going to see that our application is still works as it is. But just to be sure, let's debug this. So I've already put breakpoints in the app component TS. And let's say when I change a particular user, you can see automatically this request function gets triggered. It gets the latest value of selected user. Now this is going to be like Shana at Melissa dot. So if I click this, you can see we have a user and the email is exactly of the selected user now. And then this is going to do a new fetch call and will return the data of the post just like this. Now, one thing to remember here is whenever you have signals inside the request function and the values of those signals change, then the loader is going to be triggered. But if you use a signal directly, in the loader function and the value of that signal changes, then the loader will not be re-triggered. So if you want to re-trigger this loader, make sure to put all the selected signals or, or all the signals that you want this loader to trigger on right inside the request object. So remember that. And now before moving forward, let's have a look at an issue. If I go here and click here, you'll see something is not right. And let me show you by slowing down the network. So if I go and do 3G and if I then change a user, you, you'll see we don't have any loader right here when we are actually switching between users. So until the data comes back, we don't have any loader. And you'll ask, why is that? Well, in the app component HTML, we are showing the loader when this particular signal is true. And if you remember, we actually disabled this whole effect, which was actually making this true and false. So that's why you don't see a loader. But the resource already has something to show loader. For example, if I change this whole thing to something like users, or user pose, I can actually use the is loading signal to show the loader because it's already provided out of the box. So now if I try to switch something, let's see what happens. I'm gonna actually make this no throttling and then I'm going to go back to 3G. And now if I switch, you can see we see the loader before we actually get the data. Super cool. Which means I can go to my TypeScript file and actually remove or comment out this loading posts one as well. Great. But what happens if we have an error or something goes wrong? Can we show an error with this resource as well? Well, yes, we do have a signal for that as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the HTML and after this if condition, before the else, I'm going to put an else if condition. And in this one, I'm going to say, else if we have user post, if this signal is true, I want to use the app alert component that I already have in my app. And I want to pass the message directly. So I can say user post dot error, just like this. Now I need to also go here and save this file. And now let's say if something goes wrong, we should be seeing an alert here. So for that, I'm going to go to my TypeScript file and I'm going to just, you know, mess up this URL, something like this, save this. And here you can see now we have an error. So if I switch, you can see briefly we show the loader and then immediately we have this error and that gets shown right here. Super nice. All of that using just the resource function. So I'm going to revert this back and now I'm going to shamelessly copy this because that's what I get money from every month. So I'm going to paste it right here and we are going to now call this post comments. And in this one, I want to change the URL. So this is going to be posts and then this is supposed to be a post ID and this is supposed to be comments. So I'm going to change this variable to post and then instead of selected user, we want the selected post in this case. Then I'll also change this to be a comment array and this one is supposed to be post. Now there's a problem here. The type of selected post is actually post or null. So this can't be just post. So I have to change this to post or null. Then that means that the post here could also be post or null. So I can't always pass the post ID here. So I need to also have a check here. So I can say if we don't have a post here, then I need to return back null or I can say for post comments, I can just return an empty array. But there's a problem here as well. Since this is supposed to return a promise like object, I can't directly return an array. I need to return something with the promise. For example, the fetch here is essentially a promise or a promise of a response. So I have two solutions here. One, I can make this function async, which will by default make this returned as a promise of array. And the fetch essentially is covered in a magical hacky way automatically with this case. Or I could do something like promise dot resolve where I'm actually saying that I want to resolve a promise with this value. I will go with this approach because this is also going to be similar in the Rx resource example as well. So let's save this now. Now I'm going to go to my HTML and I'm also going to replace the usage of comments with the new resource. But before that, let's comment this out. So we actually get all the errors as well. So here I'm going to comment this out and I'm also going to comment this loading comments as well. Now I need to also go and comment all of this effect as well. Now I can go to my HTML and here instead of comments, I can quickly say 
post comments dot and here i need the value out of it and then here i need to say post comments dot is loading just like this now you'll see here that we have an error that says the comment array or undefined is not assignable to comment array this comments array is actually a required input right here so this can't be undefined i'm not really sure why do we get this value as an undefined in certain cases because it should not be since we have already typed that this is of resource type comment array it should always be comment array but since it's in the experimental stage i'm not really sure why that happens if you know already why that happens let me know in the comments as well but i think i lack the knowledge required here to be able to assess this accurately now i'm going to fix this in a simple hacky way i'm going to say if the value exists then return it otherwise just return an empty array easy peasy now if i save this and go to my application you can see already that the comments work as before but what about an error if there's an error i should be able to see an alert here as well for that we already have an input here so that's called loading comments error and in here i can pass post comments dot error as a signal just like this now let's go to app component ts and actually make this as an error so i'm going to just change the url here and now if i click a particular post you can see that we get the error here super nice and all of that using resource but you know what the best part is i can actually clean up all of this code so i can remove these three lines i can remove this from here and then i can also remove all of this so you can see that just by using these lines of code which looks so elegant. We have a link signal right here that reacts based on selected user. We have resources that react on selected user and selected posts accurately without using an effect, which means I can actually go here and remove this. This is gonna make so many people in the Angular community happy. And I can also remove this first value from as well. Now this works out of the box with promises using the resource method super nice but if you are an angular developer like me who has been coding with angular for years and you're super familiar with observables you might be like eh, who uses fetch in angular right so if you're a big fan of the http client and you want to still use that we have the other method to use here which is rx resource i'm going to show you how that works so i'm going to go to my component ts and here i'm going to replace this resource with rx resource but instead of just replacing it i'm just going to comment it out so you can look at the code later on as well from the code repository so here i'm going to replace this with rx resource and note that this is coming from angular core rxjs interop so since this is an rxjs interop the whole idea going forward in my opinion is to use everything from angular core which is for example the resource function but if you really want to work with observables then you can use this rx resource the major change with rx resource is that the type of or the return type of loader is not promise anymore it is now observable of post array which means i can't really use fetch here unless i use some sort of rxjs operator so since we already have our service i'm going to replace this whole thing with the service so i can say this dot post service dot and here i can say get posts and here i can provide the user dot id which it basically requires as you can see right here so i can say user dot id and that's pretty much it. Now our user posts should be working as they were before. If I go to my application, you can see that if I change selected user, I get my post and these are actually coming now using the Rx resource. Similarly, I can copy this guy right here as well and I can comment this and I'm going to replace it here with Rx resource and then we need to change the loader. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to replace this with this dot post service dot get comments. And here I'm going to provide the post.id. So it is quite similar to what we had here as well. But now the problem is we are returning promise.resolve here, whereas we can't, we have to return an observable. So instead of promise.resolve here, I'm going to return an off from RxJS. So we are saying here we have an observable of an empty array. And if we save this, go to our application, switch users, click here you can see we get the comment so everything works as expected but now with observables and with angular services using http client great which means that now i can also remove all of this as well and if i do so you can see that now we have reduced this to less than 63 lines of code and actually i can see all of my code almost all of my code in my view so super nice super clean i'm gonna actually bring this back so you can also experiment it 
when you clone the repository. Well, with that said, we are actually at the end of this video. I hope this was useful for you and you're excited about what changes are coming in Angular and how we write our code, how cleanly and elegantly we write our code. But let me know your comments, your thoughts about the resource function and the Rx resource function. And if there's something else that you want me to create tutorials about, let me know in the comments as well. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to the channel as well as that supports in just spreading the word out and your support actually matters, of course. And if you want to take your Angular skills to the top notch, you need to look at the Angular cookbook and you can find the link right here. Essentially, this contains more than 86 projects, which will teach you different topics from Angular animations to unit testing, end-to-end -end testing with Angular, progressive web apps in Angular, dependency injection, component communications, a bit of signals as well. So there's a lot to learn. And especially if you're working not with the latest Angular stuff, you still need to know a lot of core concepts of Angular that is going to help you within your daily work. So having said that, thank you for watching. And as always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next one.